A siphon brewer, the best cup of coffee you've ever had. Wikipedia claims this is also called a vacuum brewer, but I've never heard anyone call it that. Though honestly, I've never heard people call it anything, because you're getting into serious coffee maven territory to even have heard of one. It's hard to know exactly when it was invented, but the origin of the design seems to be 1830s Berlin. It spread to other parts of Europe and America, but simpler brewers superseded the complex siphon brewer by the 1950s. The siphon remained popular in Eastern Asia, including Taiwan and Japan. In fact, when you shop for a siphon, it's sometimes referred to as a Japanese-style brewer, and it's mostly Japanese firms like Hario and Yama that continue to produce the sets. How to? My set is the Hario TCA5, which is the five-cup version of the TCA3. You can expect to pay about 80 bucks for it, and it comes with a set of cloth filters. The renewed popularity of siphons means a number of firms have put out cheaper models in various forms, including a $50 set by Bodum, though I can't vouch for its quality with its reusable filter. Yama sets tend to be about 20 bucks less than the Hario models. Here's the equipment I've bought separately. A kettle, digital scale, thermometer, and a butane burner. Now the set does come with its own alcohol wick burner, so you don't need the butane burner. However, you can't really control the flame on an alcohol wick burner, and the wick burner tends to leave soot on your beautiful glassware. So I, as most siphonifas, have bought a butane burner. To get started, set your kettle to boiling. You could waste fuel and boil it from your burner, but you'll also waste a lot of time and unlike the mocha pot debate, there isn't even a reason for not preheating your water since you haven't even added the grinds yet. Put your filter in warm water. Measure out your coffee. The Hario set comes with a measuring spoon and instructions for 8 to 10 grams per 100 milliliter cup, which I found works well. This gives you a brew ratio of about 12 to 1, though some of that water is going to boil away in the brewing process. You want your grind setting to be towards the finer end of a pour over a drip brew. This becomes one of the many variables you can tweak later, and it bears repeating. Siphon brewing is very sensitive to grind consistency. You need a good brewer grinder, consistently ground beans. Uh, don't mess around with a blade grinder on this, it makes a lot of difference. Per instructions, add 120 milliliters per cup of coffee. The lower chamber of the Hario has marked off the three and five cup levels on the side though your kitchen scale could make this process more precise. I'm adding two cups here to 19 grams of coffee. Drop your filter chain through the upper glass tube and secure the spring to the lower lip of the tube using the clip. I had a week of mystery surrounding why I kept getting grinds in my coffee before realizing I was supposed to do this thing with the clip, even though the instructions were like abundantly clear. Place the upper chamber loosely onto the lower chamber and apply heat. Once you get a few bubbles, sit the upper chamber upright onto the lower chamber. No need to push the chamber down. You will get a sufficient seal easily from the rubber gasket by simply placing it gently on top. The vapor pressure will push the water up the narrow tube. Once you have a nice layer of water in your upper chamber, turn your heat down and add your grinds. Set a timer for 60 seconds. Stir it once every 15 seconds soon or so. After 60 seconds, give a swift three to five swirls with your stirrer and remove your heat. The coffee will ever so gently settle into the lower chamber. What your swirling motion does is prevent your grinds from settling on the outside of the cylinder, where it would be subject to different filtering of the grinds that settled on the inside. This leaves you with a pretty dome shape that shows you that the grinds have been filtered consistently. Remove the upper chamber and the filter. Brush the grinds out of the filter, store the filter in a glass of water in the fridge. The upper chamber is glass, it can be cleaned like any glassware. I found that appliance brush works great for getting into the narrow tube. Also, because it's glassware, and unlike a mocha pot, your dishwasher is a perfectly acceptable place for it. The lower chamber you've left behind is now its own serving utensil for pouring your coffee. Something you'll note is that your coffee is going to be hotter than you're used to, and you can see me failing to note this by trying to drink it right away. Give it a minute or so to cool off. It will be the best coffee you've ever had. So that's just kind of my suggested technique. Uh, that's a method I've been using for a while. It produces a cup of coffee that I am happy with. Um, if you do yours slightly differently, if you brew it for 75 seconds, uh, I've seen people brew it for like uh, two minutes, 45 seconds. Maybe you monitor the temperature, you change it. Maybe you add the upper chamber at a different point in time. Um, it doesn't mean your technique is wrong and we have to like fight about the right way to do it. It's just, 
Uh, don't take my word for uh, for what makes a good cup of coffee. There's plenty of variables to tweak there. Uh, play around with it until you get a cup that you like. This is just uh, a list of places to go. I'll be making a follow-up video uh, that's a bit more wonkish, getting more into the details of siphon brewing and why it works and how it works, including a little story about something I would, that I proved myself actually wrong about. Uh, so watch for that in the coming weeks or so. So again, thank you so much for watching. Remember to stay coffee snobby.